The Search Podcast USA Edition Series is sponsored by PGC. PGC are the longest serving employer of record in North America and can compliantly engage contractors across both the US and Canada on behalf of staffing and recruitment businesses. Our turnkey solution offers a unique access point to the largest staffing market in the world. To find out more, visit us at pgcgroup.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Search Podcast. I'm Elliot Manning, the CEO of Cayman Recruitment Group, working across the UK and US. Uh, This week, I have a brand new guest who I met a couple of years ago in London um, and at the time was talking about expansion over to the States. And now a couple of years later, I'm talking to them over in New York. But I'll let you take away a intro of who you are, the company and uh, I suppose what's going on. Awesome. Well, thank you, Elliot, firstly, for inviting me to come and talk on, on the podcast. Uh, so it's Mark Satin, um, Managing Director of Finital. Uh, Finital is a interim executive search business, um, really set up to support private equity funds and their portfolio businesses um, as they look to help scale. So we uh, been going for 14 years. Um, so the company started yeah, just uh, June, May, June 2010. Um, and yeah, it's now over 100 of us. Uh, we've got three offices, uh, an international business. So head office in London, 80 of us over there. Uh, based in, I'm, I'm in New York, uh, there's uh, 10 of us here. Uh, and then we've also got a, a team in Frankfurt as well, which is uh just reached in, uh, in, into sort of double figures as well. So, um, yeah, we we really focus on uh, one of you know the the early sort of contenders getting into the private equity portfolio market. It seems to be a bit of a hot topic over the last few years, and and um, you know a lot more businesses now moving into it. But we were one of the uh, the, the sort of the early movers into that market, and you know, really developed our brand and our space being heavily. Um, entwined into the sort of private equity private equity networks, um, and then we'll support a lot of their portfolio businesses uh, as they look for CFOs, CTOs, anything with a, an operational sort of C-suite value creation yep. um, position, um, and then also heavily tied into private equity funds as well if they're recruiting for associates, managing directors, partners, operating teams, fundraising, anything to do with that. So. Yeah, heavy, heavy sort of private capital uh, slant. So yeah, that's uh, that's us. Cool. So I guess look, and, and everyone asks me the same question, and I'm, I'm I'm certain that they're going to want to understand a bit about your journey. But at what point did the you know U.S. market, I suppose, come into the plans of the business? And you know, w- when did you decide it was the right time to have a physical presence and office over there? And uh, a bit tell us a bit more about your journey with that, mate. Yeah, so I mean, naturally, you know, we were a, a very ambitious bunch of people um, from a management team and a directorship, and um, so it was always in the back of our minds that to become a true leader in terms of the markets that we're serving, really, we needed to be focused um, at some point on the US. Um, the size and the scale of it was really around having a very, very good nucleus and a very good business in the UK and Europe um, that was going to be, you know, our our sort of bread and butter of a business. And then when we got to the position where we felt we were one of the leaders in terms of what we were doing in UK and Europe, then that gave us the opportunity to then diversify and then, and then move over to the, uh, and then move over to the U S So rather than rushing it. And we could have done the, the, the launch several years ago, there was plenty of a good market and we had more than enough people being interested, but really it was about, you know, seeing it as the market's not going anywhere. Yeah. There's always going to be a good market over here. It's really about setting a, a really good, a sort of good business up over in, in the UK and Europe. And then when we felt we had a big tick next to, uh, where we wanted to get to and it was you know really north of 60 70 people very profitable good bunch of people coming through we could afford to take a few people out of the uk to go and set it up and we weren't going to materially lose anything that was going to be too risky and so we got to that position so i would say we talked about it pretty extensively 2021 2022 um 
and obviously they you know they were a couple of good years in terms of markets for recruitment and then yeah yeah that took us from you know, 2021 we were about 30 people and then we got to 2023 we got to about 60 70 people and that real boom was okay well you know we're, we're ready now we think we've got a great business and yeah. uh, we've got the right people to go and do it and you know it's good support and you know just uh the stars aligned in terms of being uh the right people at the right time wow. do you think being on the ground and physically present in new york has made a major impact on the business and allowed you to i suppose take uh advantage of the opportunity there yeah i think it's been it, could we have done it from london yes but i think it wouldn't have gone anywhere near as well or been anywhere near as successful as if you're based over in the US, you know, even now, you know, a Brit jumping on the phone to or being on a call or a video call with a client or a candidate, the first thing they already think is, hey, you're in London. You're like, no, no, we're in the US. Uh, and automatically their um, their whole view switches of, oh, okay, these people are here. They're yeah. in the US. They're successful. And just by... Uh, just by being on the ground, by UK business coming and making it and being on the ground in New York automatically gives you that you know, psychological sort of stamp of approval of, okay, we need to take these people seriously. Clearly they're good at what they do. They've yeah. had the, um, you know, they've clearly got the cash and they've got the reputation to be able to take a business and grow it internationally. And, you know, this, this seems like the type of people we should be on the radar with. I think it is a little bit different when you're doing it from the UK. They're thinking, well, you know, how seriously are they doing it? How good are their network? How are they doing it truly effectively if they're consistently five hours behind in terms of the clocks? And, you know, especially, I mean, that's that's just the East Coast. What about the West Coast, which is then eight hours behind? And then that that becomes a bit more difficult. So in order to make the splash that we wanted, and we didn't really just see it as a revenue-making opportunity and the chance for doing big fees, we really wanted to grow a business over here. We wanted, you know, to grow our own culture. We wanted to grow our own client base we really wanted to be out here in every single step of the way rather than just saying we'll have a couple of desks and run it yeah. um and i think you know the size and the scale of this market you know if you want to attack it you need to be generally you need to try and be here and if you're not here now you need to yeah. be aiming to be here within a certain time period um as well so no definitely i think you know the the scale of the opportunity just by physically being here people see you differently as a business yeah i think one other thing i wanted to ask if you don't mind sharing and feel free to say otherwise but a lot of businesses look at it as yes obviously there's a benefit to being physically on the ground in the states and having staff there and be able to be more effective which is you know why i did it you know and why you did it and why other, everyone else wants to do it but do you, did you do it also from a globalization perspective for the business's value to for the long term as well as you know making it more of an attractive you know company overall did that have any effect in this at all no genuinely not i i think that is a byproduct of running a successful business i think yeah. if you're going out with the view of just trying to realize value by setting up internationally i think your priorities are probably slightly the wrong way around i think you've got to be attracted and see a great market opportunity and see the opportunity to build a business build a team yeah and then you know by you know by nature of that is i'm sure valuations and everything else will grow because of it but i think um you know we've always been solely focused on just building a really really good business yeah. um and then if you know, that is is naturally going to do all the things that you know you're yeah. going to want it to do longer term but you know it was more of a case of our market is the biggest market for what we do was in the US so you know naturally you just you had you had to be here and you had to conquer yeah. it um so wow. yeah that was that was the the sole piece of the decision no look i mean businesses try and look at it in every way possible um Moving it on to location, um, I know obviously New York has you know the biggest hub probably or one of the biggest hubs for you to do what you do in your market. Was that an easy decision to make? Because a lot of companies are skeptical of moving their businesses over to New York just because of a, a financial aspect. It's expensive and that kind of puts them off and they start looking at any other location. But ultimately, if it's the best place for your market and to have be exposed, you know, to have maximum exposure there, then 
you're gonna you should be pulling it in the right place is that kind of what what, what gave you that location and uh yeah no it's a really interesting question and actually uh yeah we were joking um with some of my colleagues that even though we've been based in new york you know i think out of all the opportunities that we've placed i think probably only five percent and under has been based here so in the the us market compared to the the uk market is just so different in terms of um yeah, basically 50 different countries is the way you look at it <laughs> um and in the uk everything just gr normally is gravitating or there's a heavy gravity of, of moving down to london or if you're based around the m25 you know it's where the majority of the positions are opening up whereas here especially over the last decade you've got texas you've got the carolinas obviously you've got california but then um you know, even illinois is a big market uh michigan's a big market um there's just so many yeah. markets that open up and um yeah just the the scale of it is is a is a completely different beast um so sorry getting back to the question i think um new york is a bit of a symbol in terms of our market we deal as i said with with private capital um a lot of private equity venture hedge funds and the majority of those of our clients will be based here and there's a bit of a symbol piece of also being based here in terms of the central yeah. You know, capital of, of, of finance um but then there's also a degree of you know, we're trying to attract and retain talent um and the types of people that we normally take on are you know we want to hire ambitious people who you know want to be very successful at what they do um but they've there's definitely an attraction to to wanting to be in new york yeah. um but i would say there there's just yeah especially with remote working and post covid and talent has moved a lot from some of the big cities and the big states you know california and new york to various other different states as well so there's really good pockets of talent all across the us and you have to be a bit more open minded um so i think even if we weren't in new york i still think it would have been a big success um but at the same time i think that piece around being in new york and if if you are successful in new york again the messages that sends and the perception of it just shows yeah. your clients and your candidates and your your staff that you've got a really successful business and and a lot of what we do is you know, it's you, you have to be sending that sort of positive Absolutely. messaging so I, I think it definitely helps from a status symbol it is expensive to live here um but at the same time everything's relative right so just because it's expensive to live over here the earning potential is is massive as well and yeah. you know the size of the salaries that you're recruiting for the size of the fees that you're making it is relative in terms of um what the cost of living is so it's a very difficult place to live if you're not doing very well but if you are doing very well then you know it's probably the best place to live um yeah. so yeah you just you, you you just need to be you need to be successful in order to really enjoy it over here, I would say. So you guys have had substantial growth, doing extremely well. And I know you said at the beginning that you wasn't going to kind of, you know, share too much. But what are you doing? <laughs> and I get asked this a lot by a lot of recruitment company owners is like, who's doing well? Why are this one doing? Why, why, are, they, why are they doing well? What, what do we have to do differently? Like, what do you think you guys are doing to have the success that you're having, especially in the U.S.? and you know, the growth that you've kind of had in doing that over the last couple of years, you know, is there some thing that you'd be willing to share or kind of any, I guess, any kind of um, advice? Yeah. Um, and I don't think it's, it's particularly unique advice, but I think it is extremely important it is about having your niche and really defining it and sticking to it um, because of how big the market is here and the scale of the opportunity there's always someone going to be recruiting um so it's quite easy for you to go out and do all of these different services um and you will make money that way but the trick is actually having the discipline to really focus on what you are best in class at what your particular niche is 
and to stick in that lane and, and I think really be great at it. And then candidates and clients will start coming to you rather than you needing to come to them. Hmm. So there is, yeah, it's a bit like a three-year-old in, in Hamleys. Basically, you walk in and there's just opportunity. There's just so much everywhere to grab and it's so exciting. Um, but I think that's to a lot of people's detriment of it's just so easy to be distracted and you know work too many different types of positions or too many different markets. And um, you know I think that's where a lot of people suffer in the first year or two or a lot of the feedback that I've heard has been, we should have just, God niche we should have stuck to what we were really good at and we should have just doubled down on it and and become and i'm sure you've heard that probably on a, oh, a bunch fun. of your different parts yeah um and even you know even even us i think you know, we've been good at it but you know we could have always been even more niche or, or figured it out early um yeah. so i think that and i think the other thing is just being um just being adaptable you need to you can't take the business that you're doing in the uk and just completely mirror it there's a lot of stuff which obviously if the business has been successful in the UK, you're um, to take a lot of the good stuff and, and a lot of the framework of what you're doing. But you are in a different market with different people. It's a different culture. It's a different way of of, um, of how things work. So you do need to you do need to be a little bit adaptable um, yeah. and listen to your customers and, and, you know, define and redefine things and constantly reshape it as you're here to um, to have your amazing service of what's been good, but yeah. then to refine it to the market you're you're now working in as well. Brilliant. What's the plans for the business, Mark? Where do you see the next, you know, six months? I'd like to say the next two years, but no one knows what's going to happen anymore. But like, what, <laughs> what do you see the next six months doing for the business and where do you want to take it? You just moved into, you know, some brand new offices um, for what the third time you mentioned. And, you know, you seem to, you know, have a nice journey ahead of you. Yeah, I just I think um yeah, we we think we've we think we've got a really good business here and an amazing opportunity. I think we've built a good team and I think we've built a good nucleus of a team. Um you know, there's uh, there's just coming up to 10 of us now. Um so you know, there's a good nucleus there that we're we're really proud of and um I think now it's just about growing that out and um you know i'd be looking to add more people but at the same time um i think continuing to build on some of the successes that we've had um in terms of clients i think we've we've got some really good clients now um we you know, i don't want to give any specific numbers in terms of doubling or trebling but i think we've got a, a much better client base now starting to have some more loyal customers who are coming to us as a sort of first point of call mm. so we need to continue to build that out uh, and make sure that you know, we are we continue to do a good job but i think as i said got a good nucleus so it's about not uh, upsetting that up too much with scaling too quickly but just adding you know two to three good people yeah. um, every single half year to continue to building out and, and doing it slowly and doing it um uh strategically um, and then I think if we can continue doing that and we remain humble and work hard and the attitude is yeah. great and the market that we're in you know, continues to be uh, good, then I, I think just naturally we'll, we'll have a really uh, great 12, 24 months ahead of us. Excellent. And, and you mentioned something and I, I was kind of going to wrap it up, but you've mentioned something that a lot of people have asked again, which would be interesting to hear is, you mentioned that you've kind of defined your client base a bit better and you've got some really loyal biz businesses now. Did you find that when you started out in the US, it was not only a challenge with the clients that you work with and the businesses, because apparently they like to work with everybody and anybody, but mm. ultimately they love a meeting and you think you've got a good client. And then he's kind of like, you just got to query who gives you the right commitment or not. Um, I think it was, I spoke to a, a company in London who do specialize in private equity or something with similarity. And they went over to the States, had like 40, 50 meetings they thought they was in for like an amazing trip. And it turns out only 10 of them were like were, were good meetings and probably none of them turned into clients anyway, because they were just so happy to meet everybody. Is that something you experienced? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, it is a case of they will happily take meetings. Yeah. Um, if you're meeting someone in the UK, it's pretty formal. Um and you know that the person who's on the other end of the meeting is doing it because they also see value from it. Yeah, I think 
we found out pretty quickly here where you jumped off a few meetings you're like wow that's going to be our biggest client next year and you know they're saying all the right things and you know nodding their head with an excitement and then uh, yeah ghost you <laughs> yeah um two to three months later you're like was it me or was it them or what what, what happened um i think you've just got to take it less personally over here mm. um they it's not that they're busy but they they do love meeting people um they do love networking um and you've got to also think you know if i'm meeting them they're pro probably meeting every other search firm under the sun who's got the yeah. same pitch that they're nodding along as well so uh, you know i think where it comes down to and the same with any market though is if you're really good at what you do sooner or later like it, they will start coming back to you and they will heal your name around the market. But yeah, I, I, I think um, yeah, it's funny oh, you say that. Glad, glad, glad we're not the only ones where we thought we got ghosted after some having some really good meetings as well. I hear, yeah, I hear about it a lot. And someone said to me the other day, I'm going to LA next week, meeting loads of companies in the tech space, startups. And I was like, <coughs> you know, what advice do you have? Or when don't think that you're going to win business from every single one of those companies yeah. and they're all going to want to meet you. So I don't feel special um yeah. you know and i just said that was my only advice and you know there's nothing else i could say other than that i said the rest of it's up to you how you manage it moving forward but that's good to know because you mentioned that you've kind of defined your client base and i know i'm in a completely different market than what i do but it did take it's the same in every industry it takes that time to really identify who your clients are and who you work with and you know it's, it's a journey at the same time but i think everyone gets excited about the us and the opportunity that's there that they think they're going to make loads of money straight away and it's it's really not that easy yeah, no, it's not. And, you know, there's there's a lot of people doing it. A lot of people now considering coming into the market. Yeah. Obviously, with remote working, a lot more people have a better opportunity to go and do the US market. Even speaking to clients that we work with, you know, they've said that it feels like there's more of it is another British invasion of, yeah. of, uh, of, of, of us coming along. I mean, the one thing that I would say, though, however, is I think the... British recruiters are generally very good from what I've seen to the common market over here. We've been doing yeah. it for longer. It's a much more competitive market in, in the UK specifically, you know, in terms of the amount of people doing recruitment for the actual amount of, um, for the amount of scale of, of the market compared to here where there's a lot fewer recruiters. Um, but, a, a, you know, a market that's, that's um, a thousand times the size so therefore if you're trained and you're having to really um hone your skills in a super competitive market and you're successful then when you do come over to a market that is more buzzing and uh, and uh, less competitive then you know chances are you'll you'll probably land fairly well yeah. um but you know the americans do like to deal with americans i would say and you know even when i was doing my first few client meetings I would take a couple of the Americans that we'd hired and I'd just get them on a client meeting with me just so they could hear an American accent. And, yeah, yeah. you know, someone was going to talk about American football or, you know, fishing or I don't know, whatever, but just something in terms of to make them feel like they were dealing with um, an American because it is quite a friendly way yeah. that they do business. It's a little bit more informal. You do have to have a good relationship um, over uh, over here as well so yeah i think it's probably important to note as well definitely definitely mark i want to pr thank you very much for your time um sure. really really good insights if anyone has any questions feel free to reach out to uh to mark directly if any recruiters in new york are looking uh and especially those in the private equity background of recruiting you know, go over to these guys and can definitely, I mean, if you've listened to this podcast, you can see the journey that they've had and the growth that they're having. Um, so it's really exciting time for them as a business. We'll put out all their links and uh, share as much um, information as possible on, on the business and Mark himself. But thank you very much for uh, joining me this uh, podcast and uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch and speak soon. Awesome. Thank you for having me, Elliot. Really, yeah, really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, always happy to answer any questions or link in with people if, uh, if, if they'd like as well. Awesome. Nice one. Thank you very much. Cheers.